10 Innovative Learning Strategies for Modern Pedagogy This is an excerpt from a report produced by The Open University in collaboration with SHRI International that proposes 10 innovations that are already in currency but have not yet had a profound influence on education. You can read the full report, with in-depth explanations and examples of each learning strategy in action, here. 10 Innovative Learning Strategies for Modern Pedagogy 1. Crossover Learning Learning in informal settings, such as museums and after-school clubs, can link educational content with issues that matter to learners in their lives. These connections work in both directions. Learning in schools and colleges can be enriched by experiences from everyday life, informal learning can be deepened by adding questions and knowledge from the classroom. These connected experiences spark further interest and motivation to learn. An effective method is for a teacher to propose and discuss a question in the classroom, then for learners to explore that question on a museum visit or field trip, collecting photos or notes as evidence, then share their findings back in the class to produce individual or group answers. 2. Learning through argumentation. Students can advance their understanding of science and mathematics by arguing in ways similar to professional scientists and mathematicians. Argumentation helps students attend to contrasting ideas, which can deepen their learning. It makes technical reasoning public, for all to learn. It also allows students to refine ideas with others, so they learn how scientists think and work together to establish or refute claims. Teachers can spark meaningful discussion in classrooms by encouraging students to ask open-ended questions, restate remarks in more scientific language, and develop and use models to construct explanations. 3. Incidental learning Incidental learning is unplanned or unintentional learning. It may occur while carrying out an activity that is seemingly unrelated to what is learned. Early research on this topic dealt with how people learn in their daily routines at their workplaces. For many people, mobile devices have been integrated into their daily lives, providing many opportunities for technology-supported incidental learning. Unlike formal education, incidental learning is not led by a teacher, nor does it follow a structured curriculum, or result in formal certification. 4. Context-based learning. Context enables us to learn from experience. By interpreting new information in the context of where and when it occurs and relating it to what we already know, we come to understand its relevance and meaning. In a classroom or lecture theater, the context is typically confined to a fixed space and limited time. Beyond the classroom, learning can come from an enriched context such as visiting a heritage site or museum, or being immersed in a good book. 5. Computational thinking. Computational thinking is a powerful approach to thinking and problem solving. It involves breaking large problems down into smaller ones decomposition, recognizing how these relate to problems that have been solved in the past pattern recognition, setting aside unimportant details abstraction, identifying and developing the steps that will be necessary to reach a solution algorithms, and refining these steps debugging. 6. Learning by doing science. Engaging with authentic scientific tools and practices such as controlling remote laboratory experiments or telescopes can build science inquiry skills, improve conceptual understanding, and increase motivation. Remote access to specialized equipment, first developed for scientists and university students, is now expanding to trainee teachers and school students. A remote lab typically consists of apparatus or equipment, robotic arms to operate it, and cameras that provide views of the experiments as they unfold. Remote lab systems can reduce barriers to participation by providing user-friendly web interfaces, curriculum materials, and professional development for teachers. 7. Embodied Learning Embodied learning involves self-awareness of the body interacting with a real or simulated world to support the learning process. When learning a new sport, physical movement is an obvious part of the learning process. In embodied learning, the aim is that mind and body work together so that physical feedback and actions reinforce the learning process. Technology to aid this includes wearable sensors that gather personal physical and biological data, visual systems that track movement, and mobile devices that respond to actions such as tilting and motion. 8. Adaptive Teaching All learners are different. However, most educational presentations and materials are the same for all. This creates a learning problem, by putting a burden on the learner to figure out how to engage with the content. It means that some learners will be bored, others will be lost, and very few are likely to discover paths through the content that result in optimal learning. 
Adaptive teaching offers a solution to this problem. It uses data about a learner's previous and current learning to create a personalized path through educational content. 9. Analytics of emotions. Automated methods of eye tracking and facial recognition can analyze how students learn, then respond differently to their emotional and cognitive states. Typical cognitive aspects of learning include whether students have answered a question and how they explain their knowledge. Non-cognitive aspects include whether a student is frustrated, confused, or distracted. 10. Stealth Assessment The automatic data collection that goes on in the background when students work with rich digital environments can be applied to unobtrusive, stealth, assessment of their learning processes. Stealth assessment borrows techniques from online role-playing games such as World of Warcraft, in which the system continually collects data about players' actions, making inferences about their goals and strategies in order to present appropriate new challenges. This idea of embedding assessment into a simulated learning environment is now being extended to schools, in topics such as science and history, as well as to adult education.